Uh, I, like I believe most of you, am tired of it. Tired of it. Tired of the process. Tired of the broken government. Tired of the whole thing. Tired of the fact that the founding fathers didn't go, you know, it'd be great. It'd be great if in 2011 you had to raise a billion dollars to get reelected president. Mitt Romney, $10 million in one day, cranking up his campaign. It it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And it's a big piece of why the reform needs to take place with campaign financing, much more than the McCain-Feingold situation of a few years ago. And it's written about by Arthur Lieber, who ran for Congress. So we uh, can talk a little bit about what his experience was. The book's called An Unlikely Candidate, Reflections on My Run for Congress. It's uh, out and available, I think, in most places. Arthur joins us now. Arthur, where can I get your book, by the way? You can get it at Left Bank Books. You can get it at Subterranean Books. You can get it online at uh, Cochrane and a number uh, I mean, uh, Am- at, at, at Amazon and at a uh, number of uh, digital formats, Kindle, Nook, so forth. I was wondering if I was selling your book and I wasn't aware of it. You are. I don't know. <laughs> How'd that work out? All right. So uh, in regards to your own run for Congress, you wanted to talk about education. You did. You also wanted to let people know you weren't going to spend a lot of money. Talk about how that worked. Well, I, you know, I'd like to preface this by saying is, since the campaign, I think I've become even more uh, disillusioned with the role of, of money uh, in politics, and I, I didn't uh, solicit nor accept any uh, contributions. But, you know, if you think about people you know, I mean, generally high on the list of, of those who you probably don't like are those who are continually going coming to you. Uh, asking for favors, particularly for money. Right. And I think we've got a very exclusive group of people who run for office, uh, people who uh, have very little shame in asking for tons of money, even from people who can't afford to do so. Um, we're cutting out perhaps 90% of the population, people who uh, just have, for lack of a better term, good manners and, and, and won't do that. So um, I think that, that uh, we really have to work at getting uh, money out of politics. I think that McCain-Feingold was a good start, but we're always going to run into the issue of uh, First Amendment issues with uh, with the Supreme Court. So I'd like to see uh, something along the lines of what the ancient Greeks did, kind of a shame culture, shame on you. Uh, I got an invitation yesterday for an event, $10,000. Um, what is that all about? I mean, is, is that a friend? Um, right. I think that, that you know, somehow uh, we as the public have to say that's unacceptable. Well, and the problem is with $10,000 plate fundraisers, the only people that can go are insiders who may need a favor down the road who continue to pollute the process. Uh, precisely. I, I, I agree with you. And so uh, we call it democracy, but we certainly don't practice it. Uh, we have a lot of uh, politicians who spend an inordinate amount of their time raising money, uh, going to, in often cases, to silly rallies, and uh, not studying up on and really engaging in trying to solve the difficult problems that we face. It would also include the fact that if the House of Representatives didn't turn itself over every two years, uh, maybe then we'd have some sort of compromise situation where the minute a, a rookie congressman is elected, he or she starts thinking about how they're going to get reelected. I would love to see an actual breakout of someone who's done more than one term in Congress in the House about how much time they actually spend campaigning versus doing their job. I, I agree with you. And, and uh, the U.S. is rather unique in that regard. In, in, in the United Kingdom, uh, campaigns are only six weeks. And, uh, you know, I think, again, that requires some, some changes in some laws and requires changes in habits. But um, we clearly don't value governance uh, if we place so much evidence. Uh, emphasis on uh, on elections. Yeah, and the problem is it's only going to change if there is a demand that it change, uh, that a change happens. And once again, the 20% on the left are going to be there. The 20% on the right are going to be there. What are you and I going to do? The 60% in the middle at a time where we feel more apathetic about a broken system than ever. This is exactly the time you've got to be more involved than ever. Well, I, I agree with you. And um, one of the things I wrote about was uh, changing our educational system, and something I didn't put in the book, but uh, it's kind of occurred to me since. There's so much emphasis these days on test scores, um, which to me seem to be easily manipulated. Teachers cheat, students cheat, everybody cheats. Um, and so what if you can do well on the test? If we still have a lot of people who believe Barack Obama is a Muslim or that he was born in Kenya, um, somehow we're not doing our job. 
I'd love to see as the criteria for somebody graduating from high school is if they could see a series of, of commercials and know which ones are BS. If they could do that, then we could change our political process. And, and that's really the scariest part about the Internet. With all the wonderful things that this new era of technology and new media provides, uh, the, uh, the standards of journalism and the fact-finding that went with it have gone so far out the window, um, and we're such a headline-reading culture. Um, it, we're spreading disinformation and misinformation, even without malice, at a record rate. It, you know, stupid and uninformed have never had more access. I agree with you, and I think, you know, we're losing a generation of journalists who, uh, you know, came through in the print arena and... Uh, we're used to having editors who, who really went over their work with a fine-tooth comb and made sure they double-checked everything. I think it, it, it's great for anybody to see all the president's men and the way Ben Bradley works with uh, uh, Woodward and Bernstein, just in terms of making sure you get it right. Um, and and uh, as you said, it's so easy just to say anything now and uh, figure there's so much out there uh, in the airwaves and in the blogosphere that if you're wrong, it's basically going to get lost. And by the way, it starts with good parents. This is Absolutely. Not, this is not yet. Yeah, you know this as a teacher. Too many times parents expect teachers to raise kids, and everybody's busy, and we know how hard you work, but it's your job to set the parameters, the lines that you want your kids to live between, and to help them figure out what's right and what's wrong. And, and that includes monitoring what they're doing online. Well, I, I agree with you, although I'll be a bit of a contrarian and say I, I think there are times when schools need to sense uh, the core of, of a student's problems might be uh, the way things are going at home. Um, sometimes you just have to work around uh, the parents, if they, particularly if they're, if they're really harsh with their uh, children, who are children who are really trying and doing their best. So I think one of the big things to, uh, schools can do is provide role models, uh, support for kids, and obviously work with parents whenever the, those parents can be supportive and you can collaborate well there's no doubt there's no doubt the best teachers are the ones that recognize when kids have issues and school was a great escape for me and i think everybody can look back on some special teacher or person at school that meant something in their life and my guidance counselor malcolm head without mr head i would not have gotten through high school or gotten through some of the tough stuff i was going through at home and there's nothing like a great teacher to compliment hopefully to compliment good parents but in in cases where good parenting isn't going on, you certainly hope a kid has trust in somebody at school. I, I think you're absolutely right, and uh, hopefully uh, every student finds somebody who they can really respect and, and communicates well with. Um, I, I think also, uh, regrettably, teachers are becoming more and more robotic. I mean, there's all this emphasis on professionalization, credentials, and so forth. And um, you know, you, 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 when you're younger, you're a human being. Uh, you, you, you tend to like to take in different uh, bits of information and process it yourself, not to do it in a formulaic way. And um, I, I think the educational establishment has done a great job in, 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 in many ways, creating a monolith and dehumanizing those people who are in the classroom. And uh, uh, I think we can take steps to, to really turn that around. Get the book. Get two. You're, you're, you know, you're careless. You'll lose one. That way you'll have a backup. An Unlikely Candidate, Reflections on My Run for Congress. It's available where just about every book is sold, including apparently my trunk and my car. Absolutely. All right, Arthur. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thanks yes. for the opportunity. Arthur Lieber. He, uh, he's trying to uh, you know, talk some sense into us, and I hope we're listening.